Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk about uh, the three finger joint. It's a very handy joint to use in the shop and it actually has some pretty good uses and it is probably one of the easiest joints you can make and you still have a reasonably strong joint on your uh, joinery. And this is what it is. You have your two boards, you're going to put them together at 90 degrees, you put two fingers on the one board, the center finger on the other board, and then when they go together, if you do a precise cut, you get a nice long grain to long grain contact on solid wood to make a nice solid joint. And that's more than enough to make this joint pretty strong. If you want to make it a little stronger, simple enough, you drill a hole straight down through here, go through your top finger halfway into your middle finger and put a finishing nail in it this way and then turn it over and do the same thing over here and that joint will never come apart without breaking it ever that will hold it all together very solid and so it's a quick easy joint and it can be a very strong joint very without too much hassle so also it has another fringe benefit and that is that when you make the joint if I take a little extra off of the inside of these two fingers which you can do on the late on the incra and then you get it this way now all of a sudden you have the makings of a hinge uh, again you just drill through this way and this way put your pin in two pins one from each side and you have the makings of a nice little shop made hinge uh, I, I make hinges like that all the time it's really actually pretty easy to do so the three finger joint is the key um, to make the joint is really simple I have my quarter inch dado stack like I always do in my table saw and I mounted my Incra jig right here and I zeroed it out to the left hand side so we're going to cut fingers on these two boards here they're two inches wide uh, just a hair over probably so let's make a uh, half inch finger on each side and the center will be about an inch probably slightly more obviously because it is just a hair over two inches wide but it won't matter it's the outside finger dimensions that delegates everything to be the right size so we start at zero and now we're going to want to take a half inch off. So let's bring this back one quarter of an inch and set it. And lock it down. That gives me a half inch to the right hand side of my blade. We put this piece in here, which is the first one. And let's cut it the finger to create that center finger first on this board. Okay, now that I have it cut on this side, I just flip it around and now we're going to cut on the other side the same way and then I'm going to hog out the rest of the material cut out the two fingers and they're going to be a half inch so that means that we got to move over we right now we have a quarter inch there so we're going to move it over the quarter inch the width of the blade so we go from a quarter to one half of an inch and now we've moved over exact distance now we take this one and we're going to cut it so that then we can hog up the center area for the mating connection for this one here. So let's go ahead and cut this out now. Okay, 
I'm going to stop right here for a moment because we've defined the two outside fingers now, and now we just want to hog out the center. But we have to decide, is this going to be a 90 degree joint that we're going to glue together, or is this going to be a hinge like this one where we want it to fit loose? If we want it to be a joint, we leave it like this and we just start hogging out. If we want to make this so that it's a little loose on here, now's the time to do it. We're going to take off a little bit on the inside edge of both of these two fingers, and we do that simply by taking 1 64th of an inch spacer and hold this back up there, and that will hold that board 1 64th of an inch to the left, and that'll take off a very tiny amount and makes that finger slightly smaller, but that's how you make that joint fit better. But since we're going to do a joint instead, I'm not going to do that step because you only do that for hinges. So let's hog the rest of this out and let's see if it fits. I'll move that out of my way. together. Needs a little cleanup. Not unusual on my dado set. Plus I did do tear out because I did not have any kind of backer on this before I started cutting. Normally if you do that then you won't get the tear out and that makes it look much better. But it's a good tight joint. Put a little glue on that and that thing will stay together at 90 degrees. If you want it to be Extra strong, drive a finishing nail going in through the top here, halfway into the second finger, and then turn it over and do the same thing on this side, halfway through into the middle finger, and you'll have a solid joint that will never come apart. And much stronger, in my opinion, than if you put several fingers in this. Uh, the glue surface helps, but so does that pin. So that's how you do it. Very simple joint. You can make it from any size you want. I generally try to go by the uh, the three size rule, but really all that's critical is these two are the same. And then the red middle of this is determined the width by where you have this set to begin with. With the anchor jig, it gets really easy to do all this, especially if you keep your dado set at a, 20, a 0.25 thousandths on the cut. And you have this zeroed out to begin with, you can set and do that and make as accurate, a joint, as, as accurate of a joint as anybody. Quick, easy joint. Three finger joint. If you have any questions about it or comments, leave them below. If you like this video, say so. Most importantly though, come back again because we're nowhere near done. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you again soon.